Hey everyone, feels like I haven't made a makey video in months. In September last year, we visited Flyo for an SIV and I noticed that often in the classroom, Malin would either be sitting in a static uh, harness and uh, simulating some movements, or he would use his hands a lot or a puppet. And I thought, uh, surely that must be uh, a better way. So I introduced him to Paragliding Simulator. So maybe that's something that can be used in a classroom setting to explain to the students the movement of the wings and the inputs and, uh, and how things go. So some time ago I made this, which is Paracontroller Mini. So you can have analog smooth control of the uh, brakes, but it's not the same as sitting in your harness. And at the same time, uh, was it last year, two years ago? I've made this, which is a load of channels that use sensors like this to measure tension on the lines. So, combining the two together, some time ago, again, this project's been going on forever, this hasn't launched yet, so this is a top secret thing still, even though it's on video. Um, and this I call 10C Mini, which is basically, as you can see, the little brother of this guy. This has 13 inputs, this one only has two for load sensors. Instead of, you know, using the potentiometer that we have on the Power Controller Mini, this could be kind of same thing because what's inside there, the brains of that is the same as the brains of that. So surely we should be able to use tension as an input. But then if we're playing the game, we often have to look around, pause, reset and stuff. So it'd be cool if we're designing some uh, handles to have some extra features. So I picked up one of these, you know, like two axis joysticks and it has a button in them as well, plus a couple of other random buttons. And I think I'm gonna go for something roughly like this, trying to make it as compact as possible. So I started with the models of the load sensors that I had already. I don't think the 3D prints would be strong enough, so I've put a little bolt in the middle. And then I've integrated the joystick, which has two analog axes and a button, as well as some internal holes to feed the wires through. On the other side is pretty much the same, but I've put two temporary push buttons. They're different shapes, but they do exactly the same thing. And then it's on to print. The sensors were a bit too close to the handles. So I grabbed a little bit of line and just spliced it in as small as I could go really. So I have a bit of line with a loop on both ends and then went over to the sewing machine and tightened it together just with a little bit of, of string so that it doesn't undo itself. But most of the load is carried by the Chinese finger trap system. So. I can thread those through and, and that will be the way that the sensor is attached to the rest of the handle. And it's time to start putting the handles together. So the joystick is the more tricky one. The bolt goes through and ends up being recessed and as well as the a nylock so that I don't have to tighten it very tight and it will stay in place. And that will give enough space for your hands. Then I used network cable because it already has eight conductors inside. I actually needed nine for this side, but I cheated a little bit with ground uh, and then that worked out. This was really fiddly, so I didn't, I didn't shoot a lot of it, but basically all of the wires are inside there and there's only one wire coming out of the handle. And then I've just put the cap back on. That was also a little bit fiddly because I wanted to make it as small as possible, but I think it worked out quite well. And then on the other side, it's a little bit simpler. I just connected both temporary push buttons, uh, pushed them all into place, hidden the uh, wires away, and that's it. Oh, and nice little touch, little cap to uh, not have the bolt exposed. For the enclosure, I just made the potentiometer recessed and make sure to label really well the left and right because they're not interchangeable. And it was also my first time designing for threaded inserts. These didn't come out perfect, but I'm pretty happy how they came out. First thing to do is to put the little potentiometer so that snaps into place. 
And also this was the first for me using the threaded inserts. It's way nicer because there are machine screws and the plastic won't fatigue over time. So we have the little the bottom case and I had to uh, wire up the potentiometer before closing the box. And I ended up using just a little bit of heat shrink, even though they probably shouldn't move, just to make it all a little bit neater and color coded. So I've closed the box with the screws on the threaded inserts. I've put the cap on the potentiometer. And I think that's it. The main unit is done. So you can see how the whole system is going to work. So now I need to do some coding. The code part of it was super, super easy as well. I did it all in about 30 seconds and didn't struggle at all. It pretty much writes itself. So the prototype is pretty much finished and we can see on uh, Gamepad Tester here that it's, uh, it's already working. We'll jump into Paragliding Sim. Let's go. Yeah, rapid exit. Oh, going into sat. That's a bit too much. Rapid exit. Hold, 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 hold. Too much. Okay, so let's check the controls here. Okay, so actually I need more here. More deflection and more weight needed. Let's see. Okay, that feels better. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Nose down. Exit. Conversation, hands up. A little bit of roll still, catch late. Nice, let's change the paraglider so we can see it a little bit more extreme. Initiating the turn. Oh, this is more spicy. Exit. Conversation, oh, let's go again. Have to be have to go easy on the compensation. And we're in the store. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's see how much breaking needs to stay in it. Actually, it takes very little break. And then only, only when you release, it actually goes and bites. Unfortunately, Paragliding Sim doesn't have button bindings for common actions like pause, restart, camera, things like that. So when I press the buttons, it's basically emulating a key press. And when I look around with a joystick, it's emulating pressing the mouse button and dragging the mouse. When I press the joystick button, it pauses and unpauses the game so that we can look around in a paused state. And on the left hand, we have a button that every time we press it, it's like pressing C on the keyboard. So it cycles through the camera views. And the other button actually cycles between pressing R and pressing T. So it presses restart and then presses spawn player. So we can restart it with just the controller without having to use the keyboard and mouse. Switch. Oh, there we go. Stop, face the other way, release, catch, release. Nice. I think it's ready. Just need to send this to Flyo. These took a really long time to make, so I don't see them being uh, commercially available in the future, but who knows? Uh, but I want to say a big thank you to Flyo to for pushing us to do something cool and new and we'll see how they go in the future and also a huge thank you to everyone on Patreon and YouTube memberships for supporting us even when we take on big projects like this. Uh, I'll see you on the next time. Bye bye.